use the scroll timeline and view timeline to create scroll-driven animations that enhance user experience. Fence frames work along other privacy sandbox APIs to embed relevant content while preventing unnecessary context sharing. With the Topics API, the browser can share information with third parties about a user's interests while preserving privacy. And there's plenty more. I'm Adriana Jara. Let's dive in and see what's new for developers in Chrome 115. Scroll-driven animations are a common UX pattern on the web. A scroll-driven animation is linked to the scroll position of a scroll container. This means that as you scroll up or down, the linked animation goes forward or backward in direct response. You can see examples on the screen, like reading indicators which move as you scroll, or an element that fades in as they come into view. By default, an animation attached to an element runs on the document timeline. Its origin time starts at zero when the page loads and starts ticking forward as clock time progresses. This is the default animation timeline and until now was the only animation timeline you had access to. The scroll-driven animations specification defines two new types of timelines that you can use, the scroll progress timeline and the view progress timeline. Here's a code sample that uses an anonymous scroll progress timeline to create a reading progress indicator fixed to the top of the viewport. Check out the link in the description for an article with all the details and more examples. The Privacy Sandbox is an initiative that aims to create technologies that both protect people's privacy online and give developers tools to build thriving digital businesses. Many of its proposals aim to satisfy cross-site use cases without third-party cookies or other tracking mechanisms. For example, the Protected Audience API allows for interest space at serving in a privacy-preserving manner. Shared the storage allows access to unpartitioned cross-site data in a secure environment. In order to preserve privacy, some of these APIs require a new way to embed content. The solution is called a fenced frame. Fence frames work in combination with other privacy sandbox proposals to display documents from different storage partitions within a single page. A fenced frame is an HTML element for embedded content similar to an iframe, but unlike iframes, a fenced frame limits communication with its embedding context. To allow the frame access to cross-site data without sharing it with the embedding context. Similarly, any first-party data in the embedding context cannot be shared with the fence frame. For example, let's say news.example, the embedding context, embeds an ad from shoes.example in a fence frame. News.example cannot exfiltrate data from the shoes.example ad, and shoes.example cannot learn first-party data from news.example. Check out the article in the description for the documentation about fence frames, the protected audience API, shared storage, and more. In the past, third-party cookies and other mechanisms have been used to track user browsing behavior across sites to infer topics of interest. These mechanisms are being phased out as part of the Privacy Sandbox initiative. The Topics API allows a browser to share information with third parties about a user's interests while preserving privacy. The Topics API enables interest-based advertising without tracking the sites a user visits. The browser observes and records topics that appear to be of interest to the user based on their browsing activity. This information is recorded on the user's device. For example, the API might suggest the topic fiber and textile arts for a user who visits the website needing .example. 
check out the link in the description for all the details on the topics taxonomy and using the topics API. And of course, there is plenty more. The maximum size of a WebAssembly.module on the main thread increased to 8 megabytes. The CSS display property now accepts multiple keywords as a value, besides the legacy precomposed keywords. And there is an origin trial for the Compute Pressure API, which offers high-level information about the current state of the device hardware. All the details, including links, docs, and specs, are in the post linked in the description. Hit the subscribe button now so that you don't miss the latest Chrome DevTools video, GUI challenges, and more, like understanding past keys in four minutes. Yo soy Adriana Jara, and as soon as Chrome 116 is released, I'll be right here to tell you what's new in Chrome.